Do you think Ukraine is moving in the right direction in terms of reforms? In the big picture, yes. Uh, in the sector picture, of course, it depends. In some sectors we see some good reform, like we have just discussed today, the gas sector is such a case where we're moving in the right direction. We also know where we want to go to. In other sectors it's, it's much more difficult. And also you see in many sectors a lot of resistance from, let's say, the old system. What are the main obstacles to reforms in Ukraine? Structural obstacles are vested interests, lots of vested interests, which is understandable. Uh, and also there is a, a lack of administrative capacity in many aspects because managers have changed, uh, ministers have changed, uh, their staff is partly following reforms, partly blocking reforms. Uh, and it's also a question of generations because uh, all the, gen the, let's say the 60 plus generation, they uh, essentially are used to the, let's say, Soviet-based legacy system. The 50 plus generation essentially grew up or became active uh, when Ukraine became independent and many of them uh, get used to ways of not being very transparent. So it's now to the generation of the 40s and the 30s to do the reforms. And this of course limits also a bit the capacity. How can the West best help Ukraine? I think the most fundamental thing is, okay, it needs to have a clear legal basis, it needs to be civilized. Uh, but that's something which can be done. But what is more difficult and maybe even more important is to provide credibility and trust to the reformers in Ukraine. To bring them into peer-to-peer -peer networks, to provide them with best practice, expertise, and also to be public about it, to say, what is going on is like we do it in the UK, in Germany, in Poland, etc., etc. Because the general level of trust inside Ukraine as a society is very, very low.